Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another video at my YouTube channel. Um, today I'm using the mix and match squares to create a card. And um, as the title says, we need to talk. And I'll get into two little things I wanna talk to you guys briefly about when we get to the painting. Um, hold, it, hold on there for a minute. I'm just gonna tell you what I'm doing on the project as you know, before we get to that. I have some black watercolor paper from Stonehenge Legion here, um, or Legion Stonehenge, I should say, and I'm prepping it with an anti-static powder tool. My idea behind this card was to stamp uh, one of the square images in sort of an abstract pattern going from the top left corner down to the bottom right. And I'm going to overlap the squares as I go along. I wanted this to be a little bit more free flowing and, uh, well, like I said, uh, abstract and organic. So I'm going to use an acrylic block instead of using a misty. Uh, if I'm going to be doing a lot of repeat stamping with smaller images and ones that generally would be safe to stamp with an acrylic block versus needing to stamp it multiple times with a misty, um, I'll, I will forego the misty. You know, if I, if I think it's a simple enough image that's going to stamp okay, I won't use the Misty. As much as I love my stamp positioner, I love my Misty so, so much. As much as I love it, sometimes it's just easier to just go back to old school methods and use an acrylic block. So, and I, I love creating like this. It's a little bit more free flowing and uh, it's just freeing, I guess. So after I had all of this square stamped and I took a little bit of time kind of figuring out exactly how I wanted it to go, had some kind of straight up and down, some more skewed, just going down to that bottom corner. I then applied some white embossing powder. This is my usual, my favorite, which is Alabaster from Brewers Monroe. I hit that with my heat tool until all of it was smooth and melted. It's sort of hard to see what's melted and what's not when you're doing it this way. Um, and I think you only missed one little corner. You'll see that on the final card. I'm now taking a size eight round brush from Zen Art, and I'm using some watercolors from Yuli Watercolors. This is the Christmas set. I've used it a lot since uh, right before the holidays. Um, hope you guys don't mind. You could use any sort of metallic watercolor you have to create a similar look on your own cards. Um, I really recommend Fine Tech watercolors um, or the Altenew metallic watercolors. Those are both great options uh, if you don't have these Yuli watercolors. You could also get the dot cards from Yuli watercolors. All right, so here we go. We're going to go into the talking. <laughs> and I debated if I wanted to have a separate video for these two things I wanted to talk about because I think it probably would have benefited from me being on camera and you guys seeing my face. But at the same time, I wanted to really take my time and use my words wisely or rather choose my words wisely. So the first topic I wanted to talk about, well, first I have to back up. The two things I'm talking about today I've chosen to address in a video because I've received multiple comments. And if I receive multiple comments about the same thing, there's gotta be even more people wondering about that. You know, like there's more people are wondering that are asking is what I'm saying. So the first topic is closed captions on my videos. Some of you have commented in the past that you enjoy having them and that you appreciate when they're on my videos. And other people leave comments saying, why don't you have closed captions on your videos? I, I need to have them for whatever reason. And I've received quite a few of those comments wondering about it over the last little bit. And I'm wondering how, like what, what's missing? <laughs> so I've replied each time, um, tried, you know, tried to reply very kindly saying, I have had captions on my videos for six years now. Since 2015, I have had closed captions on all of my edited videos. Now, my live streams, which I do one per week, those do not have captions or not the, the typed out ones that are very accurate. It has, uh, sometimes they have like the auto captions from Google, but unfortunately, because of the length of those live streams, it's cost prohibitive to have the captions added. Uh, if you want, you know, if you're a video creator, you can 
type up those captions on your own. You can add them, you can watch the video and type things up as uh, words are, set, are said, or you can pay an outside service for that. Now I use a service uh, from rev.com. I've been using them for years, they are fantastic. And um, that's how I have my captions added to my videos. Now for a you know 10 to 15 or even 20 minute video, the cost is not bad at all. It's definitely doable, especially, um, you know, since they're not too long. However, for a live stream, which is usually over an hour long, it's just cost prohibitive. I don't make money back on those videos. So as much as I would love to add the closed captions to every single video, including live streams, I just can't at this time. It's too cost prohibitive. And I apologize. I wish I could. And for those of you who were like, what is she talking about? Um, closed captions are uh, kind of like subtitles that you can have on screen. And it would just be across the bottom while I'm talking. And you can uh, turn off the sound and just read the words if you'd like. Some people like it when they're um, watching one of my videos uh, maybe with another person in the room and they're not able to have the sound on. Those who are hard of hearing or have hearing loss enjoy having captions as well. Um, it makes the videos more accessible. So if you need to have closed captions on or you've never tried it before, there is a little CC button on the video or um, on your mobile device. You can go into kind of the settings within the YouTube app and you can turn on those captions. Now, if you are watching my video uh, inside a web browser on your mobile device, you likely will not have that option. You'll need to use the YouTube app. Okay, for my second uh, little thing I wanted to talk to you guys about, uh, it's also considering live streams, and I'm gonna go past the painting here, but I'll come back and uh, tell you what I used to finish the card. The second item I wanted to talk about is uh, my edited videos versus my live stream videos. I've received about five emails, separate emails from different people saying, I don't like the live videos. Actually, they don't even say that. They say, I don't like your videos anymore. You take too long deciding what you're going to do. I don't want to see you picking out all the colors. I don't want to see you painting for 20 minutes straight. I don't like all the chatter. I don't like having you talk to everyone. It's too long. I can't watch it. I'm unsubscribing. And then I reply back with what you're describing is a live stream. Uh, it is unedited. That is why it is so long. And uh, if you don't enjoy those, uh, it's not your cup of tea. You are free to skip over them. And then they reply back with I had no idea you were still doing other videos. And of course, when I replied to them, I said, I do one live stream a week and I upload two edited videos per week as well. There are still two videos that are edited. So they reply back and it's, it's interesting. Like I think three of the five people who emailed me replied back with, I had no idea you were still doing those videos. So this is making me think, I'm like, how... If they're subscribed, how are they not seeing that I'm still uploading videos? How are my view counts lower on the edited videos versus the live streams? Is it that people want the live streams? Or is it that people are even receiving notification that the edited videos are being uploaded? I have no idea. So um, anyway, if you guys have <laughs> any insight into this, I've seen a lot of YouTube channels, especially ones that have been around kind of since the early days of YouTube, like my channel. I've been doing this for 14 years. I've seen a lot of those channels kind of come into the same kind of dilemma that I have, which is we don't entirely understand why our views aren't at the level that they were before. Now I know people's viewing habits change. Uh, there's a lot more people making cards out there, a lot more people showing art, and I think it's wonderful and fantastic. And uh, you know, I'm sure my art and, and my cards have changed over the years because of course I've changed over the years. So maybe it's just not everyone's, you know, like I said earlier, cup of tea, which is totally okay. But I sort of suspect 
that my videos aren't being broadcast to everyone who is subscribed. In fact, I know it's not. I know they're not. So if you are catching this video and you did not know that I have been uploading uh, these videos, not just at Christmas time, if you did not know that, uh, feel free to hit that uh, notification bell that's by the subscribe button. Hit that notification bell and you're, you're, there will be a higher percentage of chance of you being notified when I have a video. Um, also, if you're, you know, leave a comment or hit that like button, something to show YouTube that you are engaged in this video and you want to uh, see future videos from me. I don't think the subscribe button is enough anymore. It's kind of weird. Anyway, to finish off the card, I use the reverse B-Day sentiment strips from CD Design. I adhered those to the card and then I put the card itself onto a card base and had to trim that down. Sorry for the long talking bit. Um, I suppose I should have just made this a separate video, but I did want to talk to you guys about this before, you know, too much time had gone past. I wanted to talk about it while it was on my mind. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know down in the comments what you think about the closed captions. Do you use them? And also about edited videos versus live stream. I mean, if you're watching this, you're watching an edited video. So I'm hoping you like those. Um, but also if you love the live streams, let me know. I'm trying to figure out, uh, you know, what's the better thing to do. If I just went by the number of views, I would say do live streams all the time. Live streams are actually easier uh, because I don't have to spend additional time editing the video, you know? So um, live streams would almost be the easier route to go. But the edited video I think is nice if you want more concise, you know, cut down time. People can come in and see what they want and get on their, on their way. So let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching today. I'll be back on Wednesday. I'm hoping to start up that uh, cat coloring, almost like a challenge for myself, showing you guys how to color different colors, uh, different breeds and different types of cats. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys uh, very soon.